the original teen vampire movie, Joel Schumacher's 1987 film The Lost Boys, is an excellent case study of queer coding and trope subversion, which is why I am pitching it to be studied under queer theory and genre theory. My primary point of interest is the queer coding of the protagonist Michael, his little brother Sam, and the gang of vampires they meet. When Michael and Sam move to Santa Carla, Michael becomes entranced by a girl named Star, but when she introduces him to her gang, the stronger, plot-driving attraction begins. David, the leader, invites Michael into their cave and pushes him to drink a bottle of his blood. Michael does, all the while David gazes at him seductively and chants his name, initiating his transition into a vampire. During production, America was in the middle of its AIDS crisis. The suffering and deaths it caused furthered the perception of gay people in particular as dangerous, perverted, and diseased, which translates to the depiction of vampires as dangerous outsiders. While I'm not arguing that David was trying to spread AIDS, I do think the epidemic's effect on the queer community informed openly gay Schumacher's depiction of vampirism as a bloodborne disease and Michael's initial hesitance to drink David's blood. Another piece of coding worth noting is Michael's fashion choices. He picks up a leather jacket to match with all the other skimpy, leather-clad vampires, a possible nod to the underground gay subcultures Schumacher was familiar with. Soon after, Michael dons a single earring, which was commonly seen as gay for a man to do at the time. The other vampires also wear single earrings, hinting that Michael is not only exploring his sexuality, but is connecting with queer people who encourage this exploration. As Michael's attraction to David grows, his transformation affects him more severely. When all these new feelings and changes become too scary to deal with on his own, his instinct is to seek help from Sam, someone who knows what it's like to exist outside of the norm, someone who is unashamedly gay, a sensitive yet confident young boy with a sharp wit, Sam sports loud, flamboyant clothes, a far cry from the vampires' is rugged leather biker personas, but a style that could be seen as equally queer in its own right. On his closet door, he has a pinup poster of actor Rob Lowe showing his abs. This eye candy not so subtly indicates an attraction to men, and a life literally out of the closet. I mean, he is the one who sings. If that's not enough, when Michael and Sam go to a concert, Sam is enamored with the sexy, sweaty, muscly, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, he really wants to watch the sax player. While Sam's sexuality is never explicitly stated, all these pieces come together to create a positive depiction of an openly queer person that both Michael and the audience can look to. The meat of the queer coding lies in its genre subversion. In the vampire subgenre of horror movies, vampires have historically been lone, older gentlemen who seduce their female victims. Schumacher flips this norm, having his vampires be teenage runaways who form their own gangs. This gives them a raw virility that contrasts the suave vampires of old, and recontextualizes them as youth outsiders reflective of the time. Just as significantly, the object of David's seduction is not a woman, but a young man. Sure, Star and Michael have sex, but David utters his name the most and shares those sensual gazes with him. Just watch how they look at each other on the bridge, or how close they are when David blows smoke onto Michael's lips. Michael and David might not have sex, but they share a greater intimacy that reveals what they feel under the surface, as Andrew High puts it in the article The Queer Gaze. In that same article, Author Travell Anderson describes how the queer gaze challenges the binary notions of existence and storytelling. Schumacher's choices, especially regarding David and Michael, challenge the heteronormative status quo of not only the vampire movie, but of sensuality in the real world. None of these elements on their own hold an inherently queer meaning, but put together by a gay director, they infuse the Lost Boys with a queer identity that presents itself to anyone who's looking and reinvents the vampire subgenre. But all of this is just me talking. You should watch and see what you think. And remember, sleep all day, party all night, never grow old, never die. It's fun to be a vampire. <laughs>